What's up everyone, it's Prometheus. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking about something that is likely to send even the most docile coffee nerds into uncontrollable fits of rage. Instant Gesha. It does that. Even though instant coffees in general have undergone what I would consider somewhat of a renaissance in recent years, but still, in certain circles, the thought of putting some of the world's most rare, expensive, and sought-after coffees into instant form is pure blasphemy. And of course, I get that. As a coffee professional born out of the third wave, like a phoenix rising from the ashes of whatever it was I used to do for a living that just seems like a distant memory now, I get it. That was my knee-jerk reaction too but I think it has its place. This is Equator's Finca Sophia collection by Cometeer, who's a company you may remember from a video review I did back in February. As you can see, today's collection contains four copies, and three of which are Geshas in a variety of different processes. If you're wondering what the significance is behind Finca Sophia, that farm actually sold last year's washed Gesha for a record-breaking $1,300 a pound, so that kind of puts these copies into a category of their own in terms of instant. So in an effort to really pinpoint the differences between each coffee, I decided to cup each Gesha. What I found was some flavors tend to carry through each coffee, like this hint of sweet raspberry that kind of reminded me of a popsicle. The washed and anaerobic offerings carried nearly identical acidity, and each coffee had its own fruity and floral aspects with a variety of citrus flavors like orange, grapefruit, and tangerine. Just like my previous review of Cometeer, each coffee was delicious and offered a superbly clean cup, but they all suffered from the exact same flaws. For one, the mouthfeel from coffee to coffee is identical. It is a nice, soft, kind of velvety texture, but I do love the different tactile experiences that fresh brewed coffees offer. Also, the acidity is lacking. They have it, but it's significantly subdued, which I think leads them to not be quite as nuanced as they could be in terms of really shining separately. But in terms of a $5 cup of coffee, I can't say I would have even a hint of buyer's remorse. So that leads me on to the next section. As I tasted each of these Geshas, I couldn't help but think about my experience in buying and brewing high-end coffees, and it led me down this train of thought where I ended up coming up with a point that I think some may find slightly controversial. In terms of Gesha or any other rare, high-end, high-effort, and high-cost coffees, at least from the customer standpoint, I think instant is the best possible way for most people to enjoy them, because you don't have to waste even one single solitary bean to dial it in to get it right and to get a super tasty cup of coffee. This isn't the only instant Gesha on the market, but in this case, Cometeer has taken the risk for you, the potential loss, and made the commitment to brew it at a specific recipe that carries through what the roaster wanted you to have. Of course, I do think that given the time or the beans, a skilled or even moderately skilled barista could still make a better cup of coffee than any instant offering on the market. But the risk incurred from the roaster to the cafe to the barista to the customer is still much higher. For example, consider this washed Gesha. It scored a 98 out of 100 on Coffee Review, which secured its place as the fourth best coffee they tried in 2020. And four ounces of that coffee will cost you roughly $50. So that comes out to maybe five to seven cups of coffee depending on your recipe, and that's not taking into account any dialing in. Put monetarily, each batch that maybe doesn't go as planned is a seven to $10 loss where your average cup of instant Gesha will cost you the same or less with a near zero risk. Okay, okay, I can see the comments now. What about learning? What about becoming a better barista? And this isn't for me. Of course, I'm not advocating for ditching your V60. I know many baristas who love the challenge and pressure of dialing in and brewing these kinds of coffees. I myself being one of them. But are you saying you never need a break? I mean, I personally thrive under pressure, but I often need a break from my frankly exhausting perfectionism when it comes to coffee. And sometimes just add water is as much focus as I'm wanting to put in. But Instant Gesha isn't only a great option for a barista on an off day, but it's also great for those maybe just getting into specialty and really wanna try something unique and rare, but are worried about their skill behind a kettle or a portafilter. 
This just ensures that they get the most value for their money in that cup of coffee. So I get instant Gesha, and this video essentially just serves as a reminder that we as coffee professionals or coffee enthusiasts need to sometimes, you know, check our pretentious nature and look at things like instant Gesha from the perspective of spreading the joy of specialty coffee in a very simple and accessible way. At least that's my take. But now I want to know what's your thoughts on this? What do you think about instant coffee? More specifically, what do you think about high-end instant coffees like Gesha's? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Are you neutral on the whole thing? Let me know your thoughts on that and drop any other coffee-related content questions down in the comment section below and I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to the July Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, Christopher, Squeegee Rowe, Brian, Andre, Sean Noel, Spookus, Samantha, Claire, Stephen, Alexis, Josh B, Bound Copy, James K, Josh Horson, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, UK Espresso, Tim, Jason C, Jerry, Matt Ray, Home Barista Coach, Gumby, Zachary V, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Tyler M, Barista Michael, Sebastian, Matthew C, JRC, Arthur L, Absolute, Stephen G, Jose, Lauren, Keefe, and Stephen A. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback team. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Spermetheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.